Amanda. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to hang out with me. Today's video, I'm super excited because it is another collab video. I am loving doing collab videos with my friends here on YouTube. Today's collab video is the top five makeup regret purchases of 2019 with my friend Get This Glowing. We instantly clicked here on YouTube. It was just so funny when she reached out to me. She commented on one of my videos saying, girl, we need a collab. And I was really excited because we had just started talking, getting to know each other. So for her to want to collab with me so early was an honor. She's super sweet. I enjoy watching her videos. I'm learning a lot because she does a lot of videos on mature skin. I'm not there yet, but I am taking notes for anti-aging purposes because I do like to use anti-aging products in my routine. We also have a lot of collabs planned in the future too. She came with a bunch of ideas and I was slightly overwhelmed but also very motivated and excited to want to do these videos with her because it really got me thinking about wow we're already in November. It's a good way to reflect on the year and how today's video is the top five makeup regret purchases. It really got me thinking about what did I buy? <laughs> so I went through my Sephora and Ulta orders and kind of just looked at what I bought. I found that a lot of them were impulsive buys or just I had to have it because of FOMO reasons or I bought it and I just never got to do a review. It was a lot to think about and of course I had to throw in some honorable mentions because it's really hard to just narrow your top five. Spoiler alert, originally my list was going to contain Ipsy Ultimate but I think they redeemed themselves for me at least in November so I decided to take that off the list. If you're interested in hearing what my top five makeup or beauty purchases, not everything is makeup in my list of 2019, definitely keep on watching. Before I jump in, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel before clicking off this video. I post new videos Monday through Friday of subscription unboxings, beauty hauls, first impressions, eyeshadow palette reviews, and more. Also, I hope you are watching during the month of November because I have my massive Thanksgiving giveaway currently going on. I'll leave a link in the cards and also the description below to check out after watching this video. There are a couple items on my list I don't currently still own. I either decluttered it or I ended up returning it, so I will insert photos over here for reference. My list is in no particular order. Like this is not my number one most regret. I kind of just started jotting down which purchases I could think of and then I went through my Sephora and Ulta purchases to see if there was anything else that I missed. So the first one on my list were completely impulsive and they had the intention of doing a review and comparison and I never got around to do it. There's a lot. There's a lot of makeup being released. There are the subscription boxes coming out. They all have new changes to them like Ipsy Ultimate, Boxy Premium. And then we have all these up and coming subscriptions as well. So it's just a lot to be able to really sit down and do all these videos. And that's where I found myself with this purchase. It is the Norvina's volume one, two, and three. Cause that's $180 right there that haven't even been touched yet. I had the intentions of doing a review of Norvino 1 when it first launched because I loved this color story. I love purples, pinks, blues. That is right up my alley. Shortly after I purchased Norvino 1, Norvina 2 was released. So I figured I'll just do a comparison video between 1 and 2 just to show the difference. I'm sure there were people on the fence about one and then when two was released, people were on the fence about two. So my intention was to do a comparison of one and two to help you guys figure out which one might be right for you. Shortly after two arrived, three was released. And by then I was kind of just over it at that point. I had no motivation to play with any one of these palettes because it was just so much all at once. And here I was falling into the trap of the releases. Never got around to do dedicated videos to them. There were so many th other things that caught my attention. And these have just been chilling in my bin of palettes that need to be reviewed for a while now. I also saw that she released two additional mini palettes. So it's just a lot. It goes back to ABH just releasing a lot. People are over it. People are exhausted and it just loses their integrity as a brand. I'm sure the palettes are gonna perform beautifully. They are gorgeous color stories. It's just a lot. Carly Bible came out around the time of Norvina 3. Jackie Ina came out around Norvina 1. And then they had Alyssa Edwards and Riviera earlier this year. It's a lot of eyeshadow. I don't necessarily regret purchasing them. It's just I regret spending the money that I did on them <laughs> is what that boils down to because each one of these palettes is $60 a pop. The next purchase I regret is the Morphe 3503. This is probably <laughs> one of my most disliked videos I have ever done. I've received a lot of hate on it, but it just did not work out for me. Most of the color story looks way too similar, like this shade and this shade. And when they applied on the eyelids, they look super similar. 
Looking at my monitor, they look super similar. More red, and then that one's a little bit more hot, but they apply so similarly. People said in the comments that you used a white base. Okay, my ABH base works the best. It actually looked worse with concealer when I revisited this palette. Also, the formula in this palette felt a lot different than standard Morphe formulas. Like, these felt super dry. Whereas the mattes that I used in my Morphe 35M palette were super smooth and creamy. I did run into a lot of blending issues with this palette. I just need to clean this off before it stains my hand and fingers. It just didn't work out for me. I know a lot of people actually really like the palette and I'm glad. So I'm wondering, did I just get a bad palette? It just wasn't one of my favorite Morphe palettes. Looking at this palette now and after doing a dedicated video, everything just looks the same. I still don't understand the random greens, the one glitter. There's not a Morphe store near me. Luckily I was already in the area to pick this up, but if I did specifically go out of my way just for it, I would have been a little bit more upset. I'd rather use my Morphe 35H palette. Heck, the 35M palette started and behave for me now but I plan on revisiting this at some other point just to give it another fair shot on camera and I hope that if you buy this palette I hope you have a better experience with it than I did it hurts me to say the next regret because I am a huge Disney fanatic but <laughs> Colourpop releases so much as well it's hard to keep up I felt like by the time this collection got to me they already had five, six, seven other releases that have happened. So I was very sad that I never got to do a dedicated video on it. I have the Princess Collection, I have the Villains Collection, and now I have the whole Masquerade Collection. I really love the packaging. So I almost thought about skipping this, but the Disney fan of me would have been really hurt. Oh, this packaging, they included Esmeralda, who is one of my favorite characters. Honestly, Mama Odie, Frog and Wife, and Merryweather were like the only reasons why I wanted this palette. And I knew going into it, Colourpop was gonna have a bunch of releases right after this. No one's even talking about this collection anymore. They already have an Anna and Elsa Frozen 2 collection coming out. I don't even know if I'm gonna pick that up. I love Frozen, don't get me wrong. All of the princess little boxes are still to the side of me. And I love them, even though I just ripped Giselle's. These lipsticks were supposed to be like a new formula. They're the Luxe Liquid Lipsticks and they are gorgeous. Like I haven't even touched it. I almost did right there. And then they either had a highlighter or a blush. It's just so pretty and the details of the packaging were just amazing for this collection. I just feel like it got shafted as like Jackie Ina and Carly Bible did with the ABH releases. I thought about doing a series of makeup that I purchased with the intention of doing a review but now no one's talking about it. This is one of them. Obviously the Norvina palettes I just showed, the new ColourPop Hyaluronic Tinted Moisturizers. I feel like no one's gonna talk about those anymore. They just released the concealer. It's definitely a lot. Number four and five are skincare items and I don't have either one of them anymore. Number four was the Glow Recipe Pineapple Seat Serum. Now I hear so many good things about the serum and I don't know why it didn't work out for me, but it smelled terrible. Like, oh my gosh, it gave me the worst headaches at night because that's when I primarily use my serums except for my Hey Honey Morning Serum. So I tried using the pineapple one for nighttime and I could not get over the smell. And I thought Sunday Riley's products smelled a little funky, but this pineapple one would wake up with the worst headaches and I was really looking forward to it because it's supposed to be a brightening serum and I do have dull skin and I could not get past it. The packaging is adorable. It's in the little cute little pineapple where Spongebob lives. And then when I saw it come around for Boxy Lux, I thought about it, but I knew my experience with it the last time didn't work out. So I went with the Sunday Riley Tidal Wave Moisturizer, which I don't really like. So I'm like, crap, I could have just picked up the serum, given it another chance. It's a product that I am reconsidering repurchasing it. So I regret taking it back too soon and not really keeping it to try to push through it. I don't know. Did you guys get that serum in Boxy Lux or did you already own it? Did I just get a really stinky one or maybe mine was already going bad in the store? I don't know. I'm trying to consider all the different factors to it because it's supposed to be good. And I love Glow Recipe. Their watermelon sleep mask amazing. And then the last product is the Drunk Elephant Makeup Melting Butter Cleanser. I love the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm and the Elemis Pro Collagen Balms. They break down everything. This Drunk Elephant one, nothing. <laughs> I tried using like my Clarisonic. I had a makeup eraser. My makeup would not budge at all. I don't know what this cleanser was supposed to do. It just sat on my face. I was so disappointed because I was looking so forward to it. I was thinking this is going to be the first drunk elephant product that's gonna work out for me. And it was a total letdown. I was so sad. 
and I didn't understand the little exfoliator that came with it. I wasn't sure if you had to like mix it in the cleansing balm or you put on the balm on your face and you take part of the little exfoliants. I did like the little scoopy thing to get out like just enough product because I tend to go ham in my Elemis and Clinique's even though I try to conserve my Elemis one because it's $64. It just did not live up to my expectations. It was the most affordable Drunk Elephant product I think. I think it was $34 and most of their products, I think they're about like double that price and nothing from that line has ever worked out for me, which is super sad. Now I know not to get excited about a Drunk Elephant release, but it's probably a good thing because I already have like a bougie skincare taste, so one less brand to worry about, right? And then my honorable mentions. I actually regret my Sephora birthday gift purchase. It was the Drunk Elephant one. I was so excited because those were actually my first Drunk Elephant products that I tried. It was a jelly cleanser and a moisturizer. The jelly cleanser, oh my gosh. I have dry skin. It's stripped away any moisture my face had. I was very upset about that. And then the moisturizer, poof! I would put it on and then my face was completely dry for the remainder of the day. I couldn't wrap my head around why these products made my skin worse than any ounce of improvement. And then I think my last honorable mention, I think it's gonna be another unpopular opinion. I don't understand the hype of Lunar Beauty. Aside from the beautiful packaging and the detail and how much thought went into the names of the shades, I think it was overhyped. I, I feel like no one's talking about it anymore because Halloween is already gone. I do love the shades, but I ran into a lot of issues with some of the shadows. Like these three shades right here are very similar. I've also heard some of the neutral ones don't pick up that well. And then these two don't want to blend out on your eye to save your life. So I don't know what happened with some of it. I hear so many good things, but for me, it's just not revolutionary. And I test and review out so many eyeshadow palettes that I kind of have an expectation for them. I want each shade to perform equally with pigment payoff, blendability. That's all I ask for. That's what I found with this palette. It was just too inconsistent between the shadows. Some shadows were either really good and some were just kind of eh. And with Manny being a well-recognized influencer, I kind of expected a little bit more. Maybe it's just the palette that I got. I don't know. I try to rule out all these other factors. I think there's just so many other better quality palettes in my collection that this is easily forgettable. I decided to keep it because I do want to give it a chance. Like my 3503 palette. Aside from the packaging, for me, it's something special. I actually have another honorable mention, which is quite recent, that I regret not purchasing it. It's Tati Beauty's palette. I am having major FOMO. Watching all the reviews and seeing all my friends getting them and I feel very left out because it is gorgeous. I actually thought it was a terrible concept of having the same shade but in different finishes. But after watching the reviews, it is actually a brilliant idea and I'm thinking about doing the pre-order so I can get it in December. These were my top five makeup regret purchases of 2019. I would love to know what your top five are. I know mine took a different approach of stuff that I did regret purchasing or not regret purchasing or just regretted spending money on. There was just a lot of different factors that I took with the approach of choosing products that I did. We have similar ones, different ones. Is Ipsy Ultimate, Boxy Premium one of them. Uh, it could be anything and it doesn't have to to be just makeup. I did explore skincare. I don't really buy much hair care for myself because what I have right now seems to be working out really nice, which is the It's a 10 hydrating line. So I don't want to mess it up. Thank you so much again to Get This Glowing for wanting to collab with me. Stay tuned because this is not going to be the last time we collab. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And if you don't, thank you for the view anyways, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to enter the giveaway.